Again, good morning, everybody. I am on the clock. I'm doing my thing. I'm going to do a little quick story time for you. It ain't going to be long. Just a little quick one. This is one of the good ones, I think. I got a lot of them. But uh, they're a mixture between street shit and music shit. This one's music. Now, one time, it was 94. Um, I'm not sure. I want to say it was maybe February or March. Because it's close to another story that I have. That happened in April of 94. Well, no. 97. Excuse me. April of 97. And... This one I'm talking about today was... Hollywood Palladium. It was the Goody Mob. Killer Priest. Ghostface Killer. And Big Pun. Rest in peace. And like I said, I'm proud of this story because I got to see Pun in action before his passing. And this dude was nice on the mic. He was, yeah. He was a big one, but it didn't matter. He got off. You know what I'm saying? And I was lucky to get in that party because when I got there, I found out I laid off the radio. But when I got there, wasn't nobody selling tickets. So I had to sit out there a little bit and you know, kind of maneuver myself, but I ended up getting a ticket for me and my man, Jimmy Chamberlain. If you're watching, what's up? You remember? We got a couple stories, you know what I'm saying? Good and bad. So we got in the line, we got in, and uh, it was on. Killer Priest did his thing. That's when he was, whew, beast. Probably still is, I just ain't heard him in a while. And then uh, Ghostface, he was up there, he did his thing. And the thing about that, that really tripped me out and let me know that he was a real one. He did a few songs because he wasn't really supposed to be on the card that night. So he got up and did a couple songs and uh, they cut the music off after I think the third one. And he was like, well, uh, my time's almost up. But real quick, he wanted to say, he was like, well, uh, I know I'm in California. You know, Blase, blase, because this was the time when, you know, it was back and forth. And he basically challenged anyone in the crowd for a freestyle. And he was basically saying if they win, he was going to hook them up, whether it was money or a deal or a feature, whatever. And at the time, you know, I was messing with music, but I wasn't. <laughs> Ghostface Killer, is you fucking crazy? You think I was going to go up there and embarrass myself? So I was like, nah, I got to sit back and watch this. And of course, at the time, cell phones was starting to get cameras, but I didn't have one. You know, I was that type of person that, you know, if I had a pager, I called back when I felt like it or when I could. I was living life. I was outside. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't one of them niggas sitting in the house playing Xbox and all that shit all day. You know what I'm saying? I was living, man. I was out. I was everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Not just California. I was everywhere. Feel me? But anyway, he did that for like a good minute. And then he spit a couple of bars and people was just holding their mouth like. It's like he was rapping against a motherfucker that he wished grabbed the mic. You know how Eminem did at the end of the movie? Eight Mile and he pretty much put himself on the mic. And then he basically took all the topics that old boy was going to spit on him as far as trailer park and trash and all that. He spit all that shit before he even grabbed a mic. That's when he put the mic down because he had nothing to say. He had already covered it for him. That's what he did. He was saying a couple of things and everybody was just in suspense. like, And that was back then. I was like, nigga, Ghostface is my favorite MC. This nigga destroyed a room and no one even got up there and touched the mic. You would think somebody would have tried to, you know, out of spite or try to get a name and shit. Nobody got on that stage, player. Nobody. I was there. My nigga was there. Nobody got on that stage. Salute the Ghostface Killer. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, 
after he left, Punk got on there. He did his thing. And he, you know, he had the Versace on. He had his niggas up there. He had a couple of them uh, Terror Squad niggas up there. But, man, I'm just glad I could say I saw him. Because I wasn't able to see Big Pud or Michael Jackson or, you know, certain people like that that untimely passed. You know, only time I seen Pac briefly was when he did the Live and Die in L.A. video with the Crenshaw Ball. You know, we was getting there. And I think he just shot the video because it was a yellow lowrider out there, a whole bunch of females. So we were seeing them leaving. But then they shot some more shots, but he wasn't in them. So if we had got there 10 minutes before, we'd have seen him in the car. You know, that scene when he was dancing in the car. And it's like they're sitting at a light or something. Yeah, that was at the Crenshaw Mall. All the other shots, you could tell they was at the mall because he was coming out the door. He went in the mall. And let me say, a lot of times that motherfucker's dry. But that day it wasn't. But, uh, yeah, I like seeing pun, you know. I don't discriminate, hip-hop-wise. East Coast, West Coast, wherever. You know, he got off. And, of course, last but not least, you know the goodie mob got off. You already know that. This was when Still Standing wasn't out yet. You know what I'm saying? Me and Wish Doctor was in cahoots. He used to tell me, him or Timo from Goody Mob, they used to tell me every time they was in California, I'd try to get up with them, you know, or at least pop up at the show or whatever, like I did in my next story when they was at House of Blues. I'm going to save that story. But, uh, man, Goody Mob got off. That's when I met Backbone for the first time. And uh, they was in a van, homie. They was not scared. And like they said, they stayed in town. And they was the first ones to hear hit him up. I was probably right after that. Because I think once he let them hear it. Because what happened was on the radio, they said that somebody brought that song in and asked them to play it ASAP. And that night they played it like four or five times. And cursing it all, I was there. My mom heard that. They played that song with the language on the radio. He had just made it. So Goody Mob and him heard it first. And then probably within the hour, the radio station had it. It was that night. And I promise you, man, that just changed the whole demographic, man. That's when everybody was like, oh, it's West Coast. We standing behind this man. Look at him. He called out names. He talking about fuck everybody over there. You know, he basically planted his, he basically planted down his flag for the West. Even though we all know he was born on the East. But it didn't matter. We we accepted him. We love him. Still love him. But, uh, yeah. They did their thing that night. And now I think about it, I got another story. I'm going to bring that one up too, though. But that involves the homegirl. And I don't know if she want me to put her name out there, but she was almost on death row. We went to a session. But I'm going to leave that at that because that's going to be a storyline too. Excuse me, that's going to be a story time. Because that was like a death row moment that I can vouch for like, yeah. Huh. It felt like a motherfucking boot camp. And dude gave us like maybe 10, 20 minutes to write a verse. And at the time, I was on like self-empowerment, righteous, you know what I'm saying? So they weren't feeling me. I wasn't talking about killing and banging and shit. But we're going to get to that. But this Palladium one, loved it, man. Loved it. Loved it. This was one of my many times I got with the Goody Mob. But uh, not actually like hug or nothing, but I got in there pretty much because of a member and I really was fucking with the DF. Not all of them, a couple of them. Like I said, me and EJ, we like this. Timo, we cool, but I ain't talked to him in a while. Backbone, same thing. Cool Breeze, I been to his house. We cool. Like I said, he let me hear songs one day that you guys might not never hear 
and they was dangerous. Dangerous. And you think I'm bullshit? Watch this. If anyone knows Cool Breeze out there in East Point, Georgia, Atlanta, ask him about a song with him and Witch Doctor and Backbone called Cobra. He let me hear a song with them three called Cobra. It was so fucking hard. It was so Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? That's why I tell people now. Atlanta could be my second home, but I'm not feeling a lot of the music. It's trash. Back then, it was just so hard. The production, the lyrics. You know, even back then when I was moving around between high school and college, I was going out there frequently. Come on, man. It wasn't nothing to see these rappers in the street. No security. They might have had the thing on them, but it didn't matter. Everybody was respectful. Everybody was in love. You know what I'm saying? All the artists didn't get, they didn't care about working with each other, being seen with each other. Hell, there was a time I seen T.I. at the fucking, uh, I want to say it was Piggly Wiggly, maybe. Or CVS in the Phantom. Normal day. You know what I'm saying? You'd have been like, the fuck? <laughs> anyway, that's my story, man. I know I'm kind of jumping around, but the Hollywood Palladium, 97. Between 94 and 97. But this was specifically before the release of Still Standing by Goody Mob which came out that same year. So I want to say 97. Because they came to L.A. a few times, and I pretty much see them every time. House of Blues was the best, but I'll get to that story later. But uh, y'all be easy, man. I'm sorry that it went over as long as it did. It's just the music, man, and the dungeon, man. It's so many memories. So many good memories, you know. And some people be like, man, why you ain't fucking with them now? Well... That's just how it go. You hear plenty of rappers with these stories. People fall out. People lose connect. People lose contact. People just grow. You know? And I can still reach out to anybody in Atlanta. And it ain't got to be the Dungeon family. It could be Young Bloods. It could be anybody. But I believe in that. that. Y'all be easy, man. <laughs>